This is Springfield 1911 Ronin EMP 3 inch. First range report. Let's hit the range. Let's review the target for that first magazine through the gun. You can see a nice group, a little left of the bullseye with eight shots inside the nine ring. With one flyer, yes I agree, those are always maddening. I think that's related to the bullet bucket, which we'll come back to in a minute. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So Freddy gets his biscuits. The Ronin EMP 3 inch and 9 millimeter is 6.6 .6 inches long, 4.8 inches high, and weighs in at 24 ounces. It has a forged stainless steel slide, which has been blued, and a forged aluminum alloy frame, which has been Cerakoted. The barrel is a three inch forged stainless steel bull barrel, which they say is match grade, and includes a fully supported ramp. The gun comes with fiber optic front sights. The front has a red fiber optic bead installed. Now that is replaceable if you want. The rear sight is the tack and rack white dot sight, which is seen also on the Ronin. Uh, here's a view of the sight picture. I think we got a pretty good one on that. Now this has the 1911 single action only trigger, which they have put a skeletonized trigger on there. I took my camera this time to the range, so I didn't have my trigger gauge. Uh, so we got pictures instead of a trigger uh, measurement. We'll get that for the next video though. Now being marketed as the world's smallest 1911, it does have the 1911 grip safety, thumb safety, single action trigger, hammer, uh, magazine release, and slide release. It does come with one nine round magazine. Now they say that is a proprietary magazine, uh, and we weren't even able to use the magazine for the larger Ronin. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, so I wish they would have come with two at least, but you know we're gonna have to find another one, and we can't just use say a random one off the shelf, unfortunately. You know, at least it looks that way. We'll know more in a you know hopefully a week or two. Now how about a little more range time? You'll notice my target was not that good, uh, though you'll notice I had quite a few five or six that were low, the same low as the first flyer from the first magazine. Now that is related to the bullet bucket. Now when the crew got this gun, uh, the person who got it is one of those where they're like, we're going to take it out of the box, we're going to shoot it, we're not cleaning it, we're not doing anything, so that's what we did. We took it out of the box, we went to the range. And they went, hey, you know what, I want to even shoot out of the random bullet bucket. And then we threw even more uh, remanufactured ammo in the bucket and a few more different types. This is a reused picture, but we added, I don't know, four. So now there's four or five different types of bullets in there. Uh, and here's a representative shot of those bullets. Now you're going to see this pop up in this video, as well as a few other ones that we got footage for this day. Uh, the remanufactured ammo we were shooting looked very similar to that round in the left of this picture. Uh, in the video I posted yesterday where I got drilled in the forehead by the head-on brass, that's a piece of that brass. Uh, I had other one that like tinked off my glasses after that. Uh, we had ones that consistently failed to go off on primer strikes. I don't, it's just a bad lot of ammo in there that I think I'm going to dig all those out of the bucket because it's <laughs> got a lot of failures out of it and uh, just goes to show you maybe sometimes test what you throw in the bucket first. But hey, that's the point of the bucket, right? So anyway, let's move on and just do a little more range action. Now after researching this gun a little bit, uh, after hearing the crew got one, uh, and then shooting it yesterday, and then doing a little researching this morning for this video, 
I noticed a few things on the website I wanted to talk about in this review real quick. Now this is taken from Springfield's website where they discuss how they forged this gun specifically for the 9mm cartridge. Now the part that I completely glossed over when I first saw this on the website last week and then jumped out at me this morning is the 11 proprietary parts and then at the end of this state uh, paragraph you can see that parts list. Uh, the magazine one I think is going to be frustrating but some of the other ones are parts that I don't know you either want on hand or easy access to depending on how much you shoot your gun because you know I mean parts are going to wear out you're eventually going to need to do routine maintenance and you know fix wear and tear. Now is that something that I'm going to you know have stop me from probably buying one of these for myself? No. It just means that I'm going to do a little research while I'm trying to find one for myself so I know how easy it is to find these parts if I happen to need to replace one in the future, you know, when that time comes. Let's do a little more shooting. Now when looking at their website, there are some things that jumped out at me that Springfield is using to market this gun, like calling it the smallest 1911 in the world, a 3 inch barrel that gives you a pistol that is not only shorter and more compact but has a reduced grip radius for enhanced comfort and concealability, an extremely compact concealable pistol that still packs 9 plus 1 rounds of powerful ammo. Now I'm not disputing these facts because all these things are, I mean, probably true about it the 1911 purists would probably look at things like a Kimber Micro 9 and say ah, 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 there's no grip safety and all these things inside don't work right so that's not really a 1911 and they're probably right as I said before in other videos I'm no expert a 1911 fanboy you know I couldn't tell you what's the difference between the uh, Ronin and the Kimber Micro 9 such that the Micro 9 wouldn't be considered a 1911 for whatever reason now that being said, that this gun is designed around 9mm. You know, if you've shot a full-size 1911 that's in 9mm, they have very mild recoil. They can be excellent shooters. But I often find myself wondering, like, does this gun need to be this big? Can't we scale it down a little? And I think this Ronin EMP safely answers that question of, yes, we can scale it down. We can make a comfortable to shoot gun that can also be a you know, compact three inch barrel concealed carry 1911 single stack if that's what you're looking for. Now one area that I am going to mention is, while I think this gun is a comfortable gun to shoot, I wouldn't say the recoil on it is mild, I would just say that it's not unpleasant. You know, giving up seven ounces of weight and the size differences between the full size Ronin, you're certainly going to feel some things and recoil is one of them. Now it's not nearly as punishing in that regard as some of the other Micro 9 1911 style guns can be, but it is not the most pleasant gun to shoot either. So keep that in mind. How about a little more range time? One magazine at the top left, then one at the top right. There'll be a little break because I have to reload this magazine in between. There we go. Okay, here goes mag two. We have top right target. Now my closing thoughts on this would, would be, I'm definitely encouraged by the potential from day one, you know, our first range session with it. Now the bull barrel on this thing is a sight to see. I think it certainly gives it an accuracy potential above things like the Nightfall I brought that probably had some uh, questions about its potency after being stacked up against it. <laughs> the sights that came on it, of course, as I mentioned, are very nice and easy to use. 
I don't want to call this a knock on it, but I would say if this was mine, one thing I would do is I would probably put night sights on it. With this being a carry gun, I would be okay sacrificing a little precision for a little bigger, uh, easy to see night sight versus what I call more of a target sight like this gun has in my opinion. Now one thing I'm definitely looking forward to is seeing how this gun performs in terms of accuracy and precision when the rounds are not being pulled out of a bucket that has a bunch of suspect manufactured ammo mixed in from what I'm considering a bad lot. You know, I think there were a few shots in this video where you saw it 11 and 15 yards where I had say more good bullets and I think the groups were starting to look pretty good so I am encouraged to see what this can do with some decent ammo going through it. Now one area where I think this gun will struggle is going to be in sort of popularity and sales. In the micro compact 9mm age of today, now we have double stack options like the SIG P365, the Hellcat, the Taurus G345, uh, the Kimber, Mako, uh, and probably 4,000 other ones that I'm forgetting where you get a capacity of 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and a gun that's basically the same size as this Ronin. Now to top that off, I would say this is at a price point that is hard to compete with many of those micro double stack striker fired guns. I mean, for example, my SIG P365 and the Hellcat together were probably what this gun goes for at MSRP that you're going to see it at at many places. And it does lack some modern features people are looking for on, you know, like a rail, a optics cut slide things like that that seem to be uh, very popular in current carry options. Now that aside, I do think it can still be very appealing to people that like 1911s in general, that want to carry say a 1911 in 9mm, uh, that want a, a single stack 9mm handgun that has two forms of safety and with one not being a shoe trigger safety. You know, there's probably lots of arguments people can come up with to justify buying a 9mm 1911, and I'll let, say, the internet do a better job of that than I can do just on my own. So all in all, after about 150 rounds, shooting at targets between 6 and 8 inches at ranges between 5 and 15 yards, I'd say we're very encouraged by what we've seen thus far, and are very much looking forward to putting this gun through its paces more in the future. I look forward to seeing it in comparisons against other 9mm compact firearms like the Kimber Nightfall Micro 9, the Sig P365, the Spring, Springfield Hellcat, and we'll see what else we can throw in there. Probably even do it against the full-size Ronin, and who knows what else. I hope you found this initial first range report review useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good day.